I can almost feel the political apathy for the next presidential race welling up. A lot of liberal freethinkers probably have a race to look forward to between their second choice and whichever Republican candidate winds up in the driver's seat of the clown car when it crosses the finish line. And I'm terrified by the thought of a bunch of polling stations with tumbleweeds blowing through them under the apathetic rallying cry that all the politicians are the same. But I have a glimmer of hope, since at the moment it's really hard to ignore the fact that all Supreme Court justices aren't the same. As much as I love Ruth, I assume she'll step down while Obama is still in office, but that still leaves a lot of justices that are only going to make it to 2020 as cyborgs. And think about what a difference it would make if we could replace Scalia with somebody who didn't think the wood nymphs were trying to siphon away his jizz while he slept. With all that in mind, let's start off this week in New Orleans, where the National Right to Life Committee held its annual misogyny convention last week. Appearing at the convention were Ben Carson, Rix Perry, and Santorum, Bobby Jindal, and Marco Rubio. Jeb Bush and Ted Cruz also phoned in with a pre-recorded video message. And each of these depressingly viable candidates competed to see who could promise to better restrict female biological autonomy. Rick Perry drunkenly boasted about the fact that the state he governed now has more international airports than abortion clinics. Marco Rubio promised to fight against all baby killers, both foreign and domestic. But, of course, when it comes to anti-abortion hyperbole, nobody beats the froth. Santorum explained that the gay marriage thing only happened because Roe v. Wade allowed liberals to abort all the straight fetuses. And he did it with a cancer analogy. But, of course, it would be dismissive to write off all the anti-abortion activists as anti-woman. Some of them are just generally concerned with the meteorological effects. Take Troy Newman of Operation Rescue, for example. During a radio interview on Crosstalk Radio, he fell into that surprisingly common Christian bigot inability to treat abortion and gay marriage as two separate and completely unrelated issues, and explained that abortion, and all the gay marrying it leads to, are to blame for all of America's ills, especially the very small ones that aren't actually ills, like occasional rainfall and not remaining on the gold standard. Quote, if you look at what's going on in America, we've had some terrible weather patterns lately, our economic clout has been taken away, the stock market is artificially inflated, the dollar is a fiat currency. End of quote, but not list of random shit. So according to Newman, God saw America legalize abortion in 1973 and said, Okay, I'll give them 42 years to get their shit together, but if they don't knock it off with the baby killing, I'm going to make moderate changes to their weather patterns and artificially inflate their stock market, damn it. Makes perfect sense. And, of course, this week in misogyny's fat lady singing is a Christian blogger endorsing marital rape. So we'll finish off this week by boiling your blood with a quick trip to BiblicalGenderRoles.com and a post entitled, Is My Husband Raping Me? Now look, clearly that's one of those questions where the answer can't be no if you're asking it, but that doesn't stop the miserable shit fungus that runs the site from getting it wrong. In response to a reader whose husband who, in her words, demands sex against her wishes, even when the intercourse is painful. Mr. Biblical Gender Roles gets it as wrong as you can get it in only two words. Quote, it depends. End quote. No, it doesn't fucking depend. The term sex against her wishes is just a four-word way of saying rape. But that doesn't stop this misanthropic ass crap from carrying on about biblical duties and how long it's been since the couple had consensual sex. He closes his misogynistic screed with this little nugget of brain shit. Quote, a woman who has sex with her husband, even when she does not feel like it, even when her husband is not doing everything he should, is doing exactly what God wants her to do. End quote. Or as blogger Vicki Garrison paraphrases, quote, marital rape makes Jesus happy. End quote. So, with apologies for not leaving you on a happier note, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath.